What's going on everybody? I hope you guys are checking this video out because you want to know that you're doing the best possible goop bridge you can. You're setting yourself up for future success and safety. All right, I put a lot of little pieces in there. I went over a little bit of anatomy, but the demo in the middle is really the big one to take away. So please check this out. Let me know what you think later on. Hit me up in the comments or hit me over on Instagram at jcodefit and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. What's going on? Last week, I talked about a kettlebell swing. We talked about the basics of a hip hinge and what a hip hinge is really demonstrated of in its basic form is a glute bridge. So I wanna take you to the basics of a glute bridge. We see a lot of glute bridges in movement prep, in glute activation, in booty building programs. We see a lot of glute fitness classes and on the training floor. So I wanna make sure that we're executing these the proper way. There's a couple key components of that that I wanna nail down today. Make sure that we understand the glute bridge because truly what the glute bridge is, is it is that hip hinge we were talking about last week that gets you prepared for any sort of deadlift, kettlebell swing movement, whether you're using a barbell, a kettlebell, a dumbbell, if you wanna properly pick things up, you kinda of have to understand how to do a glute bridge. Now, the anatomy of the glute bridge is truly coming down to your engagement between your lumbar, your core, and your glutes, right? The glute part is kind of obvious. You squeeze your glutes, you wanna do a glute bridge. But what we see a lot here in the training facility is that we see that that glute is not firing very well. And a lot of what I see is that lumbar is taking over your glute bridge when you go to hinge, okay? Now, to jump off, I wanna check this out real quick. I wanna show you a demo really quickly of just exactly what we're looking for when it comes to a glute bridge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up on the ground, feet away from the butt, doesn't matter too much on the angle, but you want some bend in your legs. As you can see right here, I have a little natural curvature in my lumbar. Totally normal, totally safe, but for this exercise and to understand the difference between your core, your lumbar, and your glutes, what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of that curve and I wanna flatten my back out. I wanna feel my hips and my ribs come closer together, get some core engagement, and as I squeeze my glutes and I drive up, I'm not gonna lose my core, okay? Core is nice and tight, squeeze. As I do so, I'm pushing my legs out, I'm abducting my hips, so I'm squeezing the glutes, and coming back down. Right here, I can adjust, I can reset, squeeze again. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for individual squeeze right here in the glutes. We're not looking to just throw your hips up to the sky as hard as you can. And you wanna make sure that you're activating in the right position and not moving through your lumbar spine, okay? That QL is not gonna do the work for you. You wanna keep your core engaged to make sure you don't. You wanna turn your glutes on, you wanna push your knees out. Make sure everything's firing properly before you move on from the glute bridge. All right, so there's a good amount of components to that, but I wanna break it down super simply so that we understand the next time we get into a class, the next time we wanna work out on our own, the next time we wanna activate our glutes, they're truly activating our glutes, okay? Now let's start with the bridge. We'll start with the three key pieces that you see up here. They're gonna make that bridge happen. The first one is gonna be core engagement. As you saw, I turned my core on. It's as simple as that. It is shortening the distance from your rib cage to your hips anteriorly, so in the front of your body, right? I wanna make sure that that's locked in because your core is what helps to protect your spine. It helps to protect your body in a way that can keep you moving properly. And number one rule in a facility when you're training is that you need to be able to do everything safely. You need to not get hurt. So if we can engage the core in the front aspect of your body, then you'll be able to set yourself up initially in that glute bridge in the right way. Second one is gonna be the glute connection. Okay? Your glute connection, as it's called the glute bridge, your glute's supposed to be what's moving you. So you have to understand that what your hips do is they extend your hips and they abduct your hips. Okay? Let's leave the glute connection for another day. There's a lot of different ways you can turn your glutes on. You can feel your glute medius. You can do a lot of band walks. You can prep with something like a glute bridge once you lock it down. But between hip extension and hip abduction, you want to understand what the glutes actually do. Now, I gave you in the kettlebell swing a quick little graphic of what the hinge looks like. And if you're looking at a glute bridge from the floor like you just saw with me, what you're gonna see, you're gonna see yourself set up, flat on the ground, let's go past the hips, you're gonna bend the legs, you're gonna have your feet right there, let's pretend you don't have arms, but you're still happy because you're setting up for a really good glute bridge, all right? What you ideally wanna do is you wanna take your glutes, let's pretend you got a nice big butt, and you're gonna move it properly and you want to extend your hips forward. The idea is that you're going to push forward and ideally, at its best capacity, and I will examine that a little bit better 
is that you are going to be coming from your back, you're going to fully extend to where your legs are bent. You're going to come out like that. Your glutes have just extended to their fullest capacity, quite literally extending your hips forward so that your femurs are lined up straight up and down with your body. Now notice that I didn't at any point demonstrate this. Pushing my hips past the line of my femurs, past that neutral position straight up and down. It's because your glutes do not go past hip extension. They don't hip hyperextend. Okay, so what I see right here is that your hips maxed out at the top as if you're standing upright, except we just took you from the standing position into the laying down position. Now, what we don't want to see is you lined up in this position and you come up and a little bit extra and then you're over here and then you're down in that general say somewhere because this is your glute. How'd you get it up there? Well, you started using your back. I hope that makes sense. What I see a lot is people overextending just for the sake of getting their glutes higher, their hips higher to the ceiling, right? I don't want to move through my lumbar. That's how a lot of people get hurt. I don't want to extend through my lumbar to use my QL to do any extra work that it already has to to protect my spine. I want to keep my core engaged so that this aspect right here doesn't happen. We don't want any additional stress through our back when we already place on it daily. We don't pick things up properly. We sit down too much. If we don't walk the right way, if we run, we're putting a lot of strain on our lumbar area, okay? Core engagement is going to be key number one to make everything function properly for a long amount of time. All right, so as we work through these, we see that hips extend, but where do we see that the hips also abduct through glutes? Now, the way that the glute connects is running from your hip, top of your hip, it's gonna run down onto your leg, right? It extends through your hip, and we also wanna see that it's able to pull your knees out. Now, a good strength coach is gonna show you that when you actually do a squat, when you do a deadlift, your knees are not going to collapse inward. Okay? A little bit of mobility back and forth isn't going to kill you, but especially under load, you don't want those knees to collapse. We call that valgus knees. Valgus knees will lead to future knee problems. If you see a professional athlete blow out their ACL, you see a football player blow out their ACL, it's often an acute injury. It's not a chronic injury. But what you're going to see on that slow-mo replay that they give you, that slow-mo replay is going to see them driving their leg into the ground and very often that knee and that glute are not functioning the way that they want to. That glute is no longer abducting their knee and pushing it outward. That knee collapses in and they blow out their knee. Too much load. Now that is an acute form and we don't want to see that the whole knee blows out, but you also have to understand that chronic disengagement between the glute, the knee, the hip area is not good for you and over time that same thing could potentially happen so we need to make sure that we're able to engage the core we're able to connect the lumbar area with your core to protect it we want to make sure that the glute is going to connect it's going to fully extend your hips and we want to make sure that your hips can adduct thanks to your glutes and that good glute connection that we established this way you're never going to have any knee problems in the future you don't have that valgus knee and everything kind of functions in the right way i hope this makes a good amount of sense and that video is something that demo is something that you can take home with you if you have any questions, shoot comments into right underneath this YouTube video. DM me on Instagram, I'm at jcodefit, and thank you so much for watching.